few months ago on the channel here in Stroud, New South Wales, we had a look at the development of a brand new gate that solves a lot of problems. Well, the exciting news is they've gone and done it. The clever gate is here and it's ready for sale. We're going to have a look at the gate. We're going to see how easy it is to mount. And then we're going to go through a few of the features that separate this gate from others and see what we think. But before that, I've found out there's a fair pedigree of gate making in this family and we're going to talk to Rodney now about his history in making gates and hinges out of scrap and adapting things to make them even better. Rodney, how are you mate? Great, thanks Tim. Hey. Now Rodney, you've been improving gates and manufacturing gates and hinges since the 1980s. You've got a bit of a pedigree of thinking about how you can do things better. Take me through this jig. So this was designed so that you could set up all of these pieces of timber in one shot, drill, screw and bolt and get everything exactly right. Yeah, Tim, so what happened was my father was building these gates and he was using a square to get up everything square, yep. um, which was time consuming. Yep. So then after we put a bit of thinking to it, we uh, actually came up with an idea that we, let's make a jig that made everything square so when we dropped the timber into it, everything was perfectly square. All we had to do was drill the holes, bolt it together and pull the gate off. And then you were also utilising scrap and improving on the hinges that were available at the time. Yeah, so um, one of the things my, my dad identified with the hinges was that a lot of the hinges were only steel on one side of the timber. And over a period of time, the bolt would pull through the timber on the other side. So he came up with the idea of um, building a frame type set up on steel so the actual bolt goes through both sides and pulls it all together. Yep. So therefore the timber um, didn't matter what the timber did between it, it was all held together. And the hinge was just a bit of chain, conveyor belt chain. Yeah, so um, we have um, a, a piece of chain, like a conveyor chain, and we looked at it and we said if we cut that in half and weld it on the back of that steel frame, and the corresponding pin that holds the chain together would be used as the pin that would actually eventually go into the post. So Rodney, you and your family have been innovating gates and hinges since the 1980s. Times have moved on, we're steel now. There's problems with steel gates, they don't wrap around posts nearly as well as we'd need them to. You reckon you've got a solution for that now? You've been playing around with it for long enough and you reckon you've ironed out all the problems? Yeah, I think I have Tim. So Rod, this is it mate. Yep. Not just talking about it anymore, you've gone and done it and you've made it. This is the clever gate. Yes, that's correct, Tim. Now, there's been a fair bit of thought and research gone into this double hinge panel here, hasn't there? You include these with the gates because obviously gates have a standard size. But in creating this double hinge panel, you can create problems for yourself, can't you? Because the double hinge can actually bind up and shorten the gate and make it harder to close. You reckon you've overcome that? Yeah, with um, a lot of tinkering around in the workshop, yep. um, we came up with a, a solution to uh, make it self-align. So what I've done, Tim, is um, I had to design one hinge had less resistance than the other. That, uh -huh. that allowed everything to come back in line. Okay, so there's a lot of special angles in this that allow one hinge to have less resistance to the other, so this one always aligns before this one. That's correct. So your gate closes straight and the correct length. That's right. Now you put some other modifications into this gate as well to improve its performance. Improvement number one was notching your welds rather than flattening the pipe. Explain to me what that's done for the gate. Yeah, that well, there's more surface area when you pipe notch something and weld it, um, which means it's greater strength. So rather than squashing the pipe and creating a point of weakness, you've kept the pipe completely round and notched it to the pipe in the joint. Yeah, that's correct, Tim. The next thing we did, we moved the mesh from the outside of the pipe to the inside to protect it from the cattle. So the mesh mat is less likely to be broken off by the cattle. Now, while we're on the subject of mesh, mate, you've also decided to use graduated mesh on these gates, and that means that these gates should fit a wide range of animals, shouldn't they? That's right. Finally, galvanisation. You guys don't galvanise your frame before you put the mesh on. You actually fabricate the entire gate and then get it galvanised. Do you reckon that makes a difference as well? Yeah, we've found in the past that anywhere where there's been a painted weld, it's usually the downfall of the gate and it actually ends up being a failure. So That's a rust point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. So you've overcome that by leaving your hot dip galvanisation to the very end of the production process, which is pretty unique. All right, mate, last thing. We're out in the paddock big test. We've got a regular old dumb gate. We've got your clever gate. You reckon these are an easy retrofit, which is why you sell them as one piece. You reckon they're easy to fit? Yep. Have at it, mate. Okay, let's do it.
it's a clever gate. So Rodney, you don't sell this panel separately because there's a lot of complex geometry down there, meaning that this works straight off the back of the ute first time and people don't have to worry about adjusting it or increasing the length of their gateway because it's a standard size gate fitting. Yep, that's right. Well, we better go down to the warehouse and catch up with Kylie and find out what's going on with your new business. Blimey Teddy. Kylie. 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 I think she's buried behind the gates. I'm up here, Tim. Where up are here. you? Oh. Come on in. Hello. <laughs> it gets even more impressive when you come up here, Kylie. What amazes me is that, yes, Rod had a good idea to perfect a gate that folds and make sure that it folds properly and it's easy to use and it's commercial quality. But a lot of people will do that and go no further. You guys have actually taken the leap of faith and commercialised this, and that's a huge thing to do, isn't it? It is. We had a lot of feedback from people when we were talking about it. and We thought it was a great idea. So we did speak to a few people that were in the industry and um, many other people thought it was a good idea as well because yep. they loved the idea, but like you said, it wasn't commercially available before. So we thought, why not? So you've backed yourselves. We have. We and have a look at what's happened. I know. Aren't they pretty? <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is you're starting to sell some. We are. We are. So um, some are already walking out the door. Anyone who is interested in the gate, they just need to contact me with how many they want and where they're at, and I can get on and. Um, and you have... can get them anywhere in Australia, is that right? I can right? get them anywhere in, in Australia. You're in a relationship now with Toll, yes. which is good. Yes. So, um, so you've got a major freighter behind you, yes, which is great. And I've already freighted some to um, northern New South Wales, some into the middle of Queensland. Um, it's been quite exciting. It's. Look, to me, standing by watching this right from the very beginning and having the privilege to go out in the paddock with you several months ago um, and have a look at your early prototypes and go right through the conversation and the link to that video, if you're one of the 12 people that hasn't seen it, is at the end of this one and there's a link in the description as well. It's worth having a look. You've gone beyond just talking though and you've had to set up a whole business and mm. you've had to make a substantial outlay and you're backing yourself. And I just love that. That is so Australian of you. Well done. Thank you very much. And I hope you do really, really well. Guys, if you want to get on to the Clever Gate Company and get yourself a folding gate, you can talk to Kylie. She's hard at work behind the scenes making all of this entrepreneurship happen. Guys, if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. See you next week.